Good morning. This meeting of the Blair County Board of Commissioners is called to order. We'll begin with a moment of silent reflection, after which we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Nicole, were you joined by anyone remotely this morning? We are. I believe there's a member of the 911 EMA joining us. Chris Fredrickson. Thank you, Chris. Is there anyone else joining us remotely at this time? Not hearing anyone else, sir. That is roll. Okay. Thank you very much. You'll see the schedule of upcoming meetings under item five on the agenda. Um, note two things. First off, the, uh, Thursday's prison board meeting will be the quarterly meeting that will be at the prison uh, rather than here in the commissioner's public meeting room. We also remind everyone that Monday, June 19th, uh, the courthouse is closed in recognition of Juneteenth holiday. Um, Nicole, do you have an announcement? I do. Immediately following today's uh Random anonymous member of the crowd reminding me to recording has started. <laughs> Immediately following today's commissioners' meeting, Labor Council John Baker and the three commissioners, finance director, and myself will meet uh, in our conference room on one collective bargaining unit. Thank you very much. Um, welcome the meeting to any public comment at this time. Hearing none. Commissioner comments. Commissioner Webb, please. Thank you. I don't have anything today. Hey. Expect my chair needs to be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so but you took care of that. Very good. <laughs> Commissioner Burke. Nothing for me. All right. Uh, Nicole, can you take us through the consent agenda, please? Absolutely. The consent agenda is resolution number 280. It's the payment of the following four warrant lists as outlined on your agenda in item A. That does include payments to Thomas and Chandra Jandora in the amount of $1,550 and UPMC Altoona in the total amount of $770.98. It's the ratification of the five warrant lists as outlined in item B. It's budget transfers in C and D. It's uh, under human resources. It's approving a transitional work experience worksite agreement between the County of Blair and Goodwill of the Southern Alleghenies, as outlined on your agenda. For human resources, it's approving one TWE PWE trainee, Margaret Cook, within the tax claim office for the period of June 20th, 2023 through September 9th, I'm sorry, September 4th, 2023, at no cost to the county. It's terminations, resignations, and employments and also employment status changes as outlined in items G, H, I, and J, respectively. Uh, thank you, Nicole. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mr. Webster, I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. I am an aye with an abstention to the payment to Thomas and Chandra Jandora. I'm an aye with an abstention to the payment to UPMC Altoona. Consent agenda is approved with the abstentions as noted. We'll move on now to staff reports and special business and begin with Bellevue Park and the Park and Rec Board, uh, Joe Keller. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Um, there's a change order um, for uh, Stelco. There's, um, it's for an additional one and a half inch conduit. The, the intent was to use, uh, there's an existing service line to the old amphitheater that um, starts and ends in a conduit. We thought the whole thing was in a conduit. It wasn't just uh, just a few feet. And the intent was to use that uh, spare conduit, take the electric out and use it as a spare conduit. So 
were required to put a spare conduit in with an inch and a half line. So the the, the cost of that is um, about six hundred ninety four dollars. Um, Any questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, item B from the Blair County Planning Commission, uh, Sherry Sensi. Good morning. Good morning, Sherry. Um, we are submitting a grant application for an Act 167 stormwater management plan. Uh, DEP contacted the stormwater coordinator in Chelsea uh, Ergler last week regarding money available for uh, Act 167 plan through DEP. Um, we had a telephone conference with um, Chelsea and also the DEP coordinator regarding this um, plan that we could apply for funding. We do not currently have a countywide Act 167 plan in place. Um, we are able to ask for a max of, of $40,000 with a 10% match. Um, that's based off of our demographic for the countywide plan. Um, we will be coordinating um, a watershed plan advisory committee that will have key stakeholders as well as the municipalities to participate. Um, also Penn State Altoona um, and other key stakeholders in the area for their um, problems, issues, concerns, watershed um, advisory things that they want um, identified in the plan. And this is the phase one scope of work that we'll be applying for. Um, once that is awarded, hopefully um, in September, then we can coordinate those efforts. There's a three year um, plan in place once that's awarded, and then we can go after phase two um, to apply for funding to actually do the model ordinances and also um, stormwater ordinances through the municipalities for enforcement and um, advisory. So we're just asking for the commissioners for a letter of support for this current communication. Any questions for Sherry? Sherry, do you know, do you know the source of the 10% uh, match? Mm -hmm. um, we are looking at options for that, but we'll have that through the Planning Commission. Okay. Most likely will be MPF funding. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, from emergency services, Chris Fredrickson is on the phone with us. Good, Good morning. morning. I'm requesting approval of a no-cost period of performance extension for our hospital materials response fund HMRF grant agreement to extend the term from January to January 31st of 2024 and a period of performance to December 31st of 2023. Any questions for Chris? And this will allow you from our material to uh, use funding for the Sarah Summit in this September. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. We usually have the Sarah Summit in the spring, but we're getting things back on track after COVID, and we're planning it for September. Yeah. And this grant generally ends in June. Any questions, other questions for Chris? All right, Chris, then we'll move that to Thursday's business agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and IMD, uh, Fort Roberto, Ryan Nelson joins us. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm requesting approval of an agreement between the County of Blair on behalf of Fort Roberto and Schlesinger Communications for a radio advertisement campaign promoting Fort Roberto's Star Spangled Fourth event in our tour season in the total amount of $525 to be paid by the Fort Roberto Association. Questions for Ryan? Thank you. For that. Thank you, Ryan. I right, mean, uh, Nicole, we're going to ask uh, for yes. you to take care of this. I can take care of this one. Um, for um, the commissioner's office, I am requesting approval of an engagement letter from McNeese Wallace to provide legal services in a, in a lawsuit that was filed by Matthew Krause, Rebecca Krause, and Isaac, Isaac Krause at the hourly rates that are agreed upon in said letter. Um, when I originally reached out to our typical, uh, well, let me back up even further, uh, we, ex we submitted this to multiple uh, insurance uh, policies that the county has um, or has had. Uh, this we had a claims based policy back um, when this claim would have arisen in 20, 2007 to 2015 or whatever the, the claim dates are 
they, because they were claims made and not occurrence based, um, those policies were not provided for coverage. Um, P Corp on certain on certain areas of our P Corp insurance, it does go retroactively back to the. Um, they do cover us retroactively back to the inception of P Corp, which is sometime in uh, 1983. Unfortunately, this claim falls under general liability for P Corp, where typically on different insurance comp um, different claim other policies might it might fall under for potentially um, officers and uh, or some emissions claim. This one for P Corp falls under general liability. The general liability does not retroactively go back to 1983, like some of us might have thought when we signed up for P Corp or we're trying to get claims covered, because general liability typically is your slips and falls or your, you know, structural damage or your car accidents that you don't necessarily need to have retroactive coverage. Um, general liability also excludes specifically children and youth claims. So that has found us in a coverage gap. So unfortunately, today I'm here before you. Um, with not the best news, uh, this is going to be the county's responsibility to cover 100% of the costs. Um, I do have an email out to our consultants as well as Mindy and our fiscal department of children and youth to see if we allocate these funds because it is a children and youth claim. If we allocate these funds to the children and youth, will it be picked up at a needs-based budget or some other way? Uh, she, the bulletin wasn't clear. Claudia was getting some more information. Claudia is our CAI uh, fiscal consultant. Um, so there, there may be some good news for some partial coverage from the state with this this lawsuit, but um, until we find that out, we still need to proceed with this lawsuit. We were we were served, uh, although we read it in the paper back in March, uh, we were served just uh, mid May or so. So we do we do it, a response is due. Um, we did get an extension through McNeese Wallace. I I at least authorized them to go on our behalf and do that prior to signing the letter of engagement. And um, I'm before you today to sign that. Now, I will say the, the rates that you do see in the letter are about $50 less for each. Um, and because we don't list them, there's there's so many uh, rates in the letter. Um, they are about $50,000, I'm sorry, $50 per hour less than what he quoted me on the phone. So I think John Baker has been uh, good to the county. Um, it's just hard to swallow a claim at 100%, unfortunately, for this. So. Okay, uh, the board, if you want you don't need action in this case. No, I can wait till Thursday. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, any questions? All right, thank you. We'll move that on and go to item F for children, youth, and families. And instead of Mindy, we welcome uh, Mary Bach. Good morning, commissioners. Children, youth, and families is requesting consideration for approval on two contracts. The one is the 2022-23 Bear Foundation Renewal Contract Services. And the other one is the 2324 Ray Ray Lashinsky for Larry Lashinsky Law Services. Okay. Very routine. Any questions for Carrie on these? No, but I, since the second one is a 2324 contract, I wish I had like a gun to shoot confetti or something, but yeah. Yeah, I don't. Hopper. So. <laughs> I'm going to do on the ball. Huh? Yeah, saying that just gives us the effect, so thank you. <laughs> Imagine it. Thanks very much, Peter. We'll take that to Thursday. Okay. Item G, Human Resources and <laughs> Benefits Specialist, Brian Walters. Good morning, Brian. Good morning. I'm here with two items today. The first is uh, a request for approval of updates to our adoption agreement with Nationwide Retirement Services regarding our 457B Deferred Compensation Plan. There are three items. Uh, the first is simply addition of language to comply with the SECURE Act. The second is addition of language to comply with the CARES Act. And most significantly is the third, which is addition of a provision for a 457 Roth uh, plan within Nationwide. Uh, this amendment would uh, reflect co the code uh, section 402A as amended by the Small Business Jobs Act of 2010 and effective June 1st would give county employees an additional option for retirement planning at no cost to county. Um, well, but there's two stand, two required and one just a good thing, so. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Any questions for Brian on that one before we go to the? Um, 
administratively, Brian, do you need those approved in separate resolution numbers or can they be approved with one county resolution approving the entire one county plan? resolution okay. and approving the entire thing would be fine. Okay. And then I just have to ask the effective June 1st, 2023, since we're already at June 13th, is there a specific reason why we picked that date or? There has been a lot of back and forth with Nationwide to get the correct changes uh, drafted into the plan document. And we went with a June 1 effective date. It's sort of We're null and void in terms of approving it retroactively. I guess my, my only thought process for asking that is if an employee comes back and says, well, I want to retroactively go back to June 1st to start my Roth IRA. They absolutely could do that. They could do that. So they absolutely could. Chances yeah. of that are very, extremely it's remote. Extremely remote. remote. Yeah. Um, we took, so we really haven't promoted it yet, so until. Exactly, and, and we still have to nail that piece of it down. Um, my understanding is Nationwide is going to contact all current 457B participants and advise them that the Roth is now in effect because this amendment will also allow transfers from the regular 457B to the Roth 457B if, if uh, enrolled employees chose to do so. So. Um, if somebody said, hey, I want to open a Roth IRA, but uh, or excuse me, a Roth 457, but I want it retroactive to June 1, that's great. We're not going to start their payroll deductions until the paperwork is set up. Um, so it's sort of a, a new point. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that it didn't mess with anything paperwork-wise administratively in the future if someone didn't want to do that. So that makes sense. Okay. Thank you. I'm assuming that if they... Uh uh, when Nationwide sends that out and mentions the fact they can transfer, they will mention that that is a taxable event. Exactly. As well. Okay. Exactly. Just so are we, uh, somebody's mentioned that too. Great. Yeah. Thank you. And and then I'm anticipating receipt of some additional documentation that I can provide with the new hire orientation packet. Um, and obviously, we'll be incorporating that into our open enrollment materials for next year as well. All right. So we'll let you go to the Yes. Second item, I am requesting approval for payment of our patient-centered outcomes research fee um, for our plan year that ended 2022 um, in the amount of $1,872.09. Um, this is a requirement under the Health Care Reform Act to finance uh, PCORI, which is a private nonprofit corporation that funds research of clinical effectiveness of medical treatments and all plan sponsors of certain self-insured health plans, including county, must annually report and pay these PCOR fees to the IRS by the end of the second quarter of the calendar year, following the year in which the most recent plan year ended. It's a slight increase from last year because the actual rate uh, increased for this plan year, but I used the calculation method to um, there are three options on the calculation method that I did all three and then used the one that uh, was the most cost effective for the taxpayers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Questions for Brian? They got the third space meeting. Thank you, Brian. Thanks. Uh, and to item H on uh, County Road 101. Paper joins us from Highway. Good morning, Paul. I'm here for requesting approval of a application of a HOP County Road 101 Everett Road Greenfield Township uh, submitted by Texas Eastern Transmission LP for a pipeline replacement project along east side of County Road 101 Everett Road and along the west side of Dunnings Highway 220 SR 3013. Um, we are pending bond right now. Um, they did send us the bond and some more information they had to fix. They had the wrong township on the application and some of the mapping. They did fix that. I sent the bond to Nathan and Melissa and Eagle Eye Melissa caught the mistake on the bond. So I uh, sent it back to Texas Eastern and they had to send it back to their bond company to fix that. So once that comes back, I will send it back to Melissa and Nathan to review. And there is a fee, obviously, from uh, Keller Engineering, which was not we will not pay, obviously, uh, but they will. Uh, we had to get Keller Engineering in for their services. 
Questions for Paul? So I just have one question. When I, on the form itself, it says comprehensive description of proposed work, and it and it looks like there's a little plus sign at the, at the very end of the box. I was reading it. It says that they're going to weld the new pipe to the existing pipe on the west side of Dunning's Highway, and, and I'm assuming there's a little bit more because there's an end there. Do you well, have any they're, idea they're not touching our road at all. They're not. They're going underneath our road. Okay, and the, that's what, what I'm more concerned about. Right. Is what are they which, doing? which um, Brian Weiser from Keller got a bond uh, amount of to fix the road if if there's any damage or anything. So, and that's what they're working on right now. Okay. Cool. Uh, yes, Paul, can yes. you attend Thursday's meeting to update the commissioners on where this stands? Because hmm? um, yeah. I won't I won't be here. Thursday. Correct. Yep. So good. Yep. So Hopefully. Paul will get you updated on Thursday to see if this is ready to move forward or pending, move forward with pending anything that's outstanding. And then you guys can make a decision from there or hold it till Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. We're reaching the end of our uh, special reports and new business. We have no old business, and we will adjourn, therefore, at this time. There are no objections, and thank everyone for their participation this morning's meeting.